Now we're going to use Sage 50 accounting software to complete exercise 3A-1 on page 98 of the textbook. So as you can see we're, we're logging in, we're creating a new company and please when you're creating the new company use the information provided and then in parentheses put your last name and the problem number and that'll help me make sure that uh, everything's accurate. Always make sure it's also a corporation as the business type and put in some sort of a federal employer ID number. You always want to build your own chart of accounts. Don't bother with the other choices. Use the accrual method. Um, always do the posting method in real time for our activities. And we're going to use the 12 monthly accounting periods per year. The problem tells us that this is happening in April, so just use April 2015. That's fine. Um, but always refer back to the problem information. When you're ready, that screen will come up. Just hit OK. And now we've got a little bit of a wait. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind while you are waiting for this is you're going to start to create a chart of accounts. So I want you to look through the transactions that you're going to be inputting. And I want you to think about the different accounts that you're going to use and that you're going to have to create. So, for example, on line uh, transaction one from April 1st, Jamie Moore invested $110,000 in cash and $12,000 in equipment into her new business. So you're going to need a cash account, you're going to need an equipment account, and you're also going to need a J. Moore owner's equity, um, J. Moore capital account. You will need a building account and an accounts payable for line two, a truck account and a the cash account which you should have already created and you're also going to need a supplies account and that accounts payable that you've already done. Um, so those are all the different accounts you're going to need. There should be I believe seven different accounts that you'll be using. So when you get through here just go ahead and close that down. We're going to go through maintain and go to chart of accounts and this is where we create those uh, seven accounts that we're going to need in order to input our transaction. So for account number, we're using that GL number. We're just creating one for each account. So on this one, it's cash. Click Save uh, and New, and that'll open up, allow us to create a new account. 112 will be Equipment. It's going to be not a cash account, but you can scroll down and check a diff bunch of the different ones, and this is a fixed asset. We're going to have equipment for long-term use um, over a long period of time, so that's a fixed asset account. Same thing with the building account, same thing with the truck account, and same thing with the supplies account. Um, all those different accounts, again, there are other types of assets, but we're going to stick with fixed assets in this case because we're planning on using these long term. So we'll just make the last account supplies, call it a fixed asset, save and new. Next we need our accounts payable account, so we'll call it a 211. We'll type in accounts payable and we'll scroll up on the list up to accounts payable and save that. Last account is the capital account. Remember it's the first initial last name comma capital and we're looking for retained earnings for equity. There's two other equity ones. Don't use those. Make sure you use retained earnings. Hit save. Once you've created those seven accounts that we'll need, you can go back, close it, and look at list charts of account. And it brings it right up there for you. You've got all seven accounts that you created, the description, which is just the name of the accounts. You see what type of accounts they are, and they all should have beginning balance or running balance of zero since we haven't put in any transactions for them yet. Um, you can go ahead and close that down. We're going to go to tools and we're going to scroll down and we are going to put in some general journal entries. So start with the date and the problems will give you the date that they occurred, April 1st. Reference is just memo and from here on in the computer will autofill that, which is very nice. The software takes care of that for you, autofills it. So first transaction you know is cash. Um, you know that you're getting cash, $110,000. You know here it should be equipment because Jamie Moore also invested equipment. She invested $12,000 in equipment. And the third part of this is going to be the owner's equity increasing that capital account. 
So that should be account number 311. And here you want to type in what happened. So invested um, cash and equipment into the business, uh, some sort of line like that that'll really uh, just let you know what was going on when this account happened. And the total should be 122,000, which is the total of the cash plus the total of the equipment. Always look down at the bottom, it gives you the totals, and the balance should be zero on the very bottom. Now you want to move on to the next date, the next transaction. In this case, it's going to be April 3rd. It'll autofill memo one for you. Your building account is going to go up $70,000 and your accounts payable will go up seventy thousand dollars so when you're putting in your building account you want to be able to put in that seventy thousand dollars in the debit side because it is an asset and you're going to credit your accounts payable seventy thousand dollars for purchasing a building on account once again look down at the bottom is it out of balance no balance is zero so you're good moving on to the third one you're purchasing a truck for $12,000 in cash. So you're going to debit the truck account, which is an asset, for that $12,000 uh, purchase. And then you are going to credit your cash account because you're paying cash for it. So your cash is going down. You're going to credit it $12,000. And your description should be uh, purchased a truck for cash, something like that. Once again, make sure the out of balance is zero. Put in that last transaction. On April 18th, bought supplies for $700 on account. So the supplies will go up. So it's going to be debited for the $700. And then your accounts payable will also go up. And this is going to go up by $700. And if you go ahead to credit and put in the $700 and then go back to description, that's okay. Um, you can make any changes you need to as you go and then hit save at the end. So you're purchasing supplies on account in this particular transaction. Out of balance is zero, so that looks great. And now you just go up, you hit save. And then you're going to go ahead and close this little window because we've made all of our transactions. And now we're going to go to reports. And we need to see what we've got going on. So once we open up those reports, select General Journal. And General Journal will give you this. Now General Journal is not one that you need to print for any homework assignments or any classroom assignments. Um, General Journal just gives you, make sure, gives you an opportunity to look at each transaction. Make sure that they're all there, um, that you haven't missed any. You are going to go to General Ledger next, and General Ledger is a more detailed accounting, and it's broken down, as you can see on the left, by the different accounts. So you've got all your different accounts and the transactions that affect each of those accounts by date, with an ending balance for each account. This you will print out, so it's up near the top of the screen, right there's the print button. You're going to click that and you're going to turn that in as part of the um, solution to these exercises. Next is your trial balance. As you can see, this is so much more, uh, so much easier than generating one on your own. The total balances should balance, and it's really a fantastic way to do this. It's a lot faster than uh, breaking it all down by paper. Next, you go to financial statements on that left-hand taskbar. You're going to select the balance sheet. Click OK through that after checking the dates, and once this comes up, this has just created your balance sheet for you, so you're going to print that out and turn that in as part of each assignment. Again, it's a lot easier than generating them the long way uh, that we were previously doing for um, the earlier chapters. Once your balance sheet is all done and printed out, you can go ahead and close that down and then you're going to start doing your income statement. Your income statement is the last financial statement that you'll need for this. Uh, for this particular example, there is no income statement because we've seen, or there's zeros, because we've had no revenue and no expenses uh, for anything. So everything should be zeroed out here. We're going to print this. We are going to uh, go ahead and submit that 
with your balance sheet, your general ledger, and your general ledger try and trial balance. Those four documents, they should all have your last name.